Welcome, Pewter Report readers and listeners, to another edition of the Pewter Report podcast, Energized by Celsius. I'm John Ledger. Down there at the bottom is Mark Cook. And Mark, we're joined today by an old familiar face. I, I kind of I forgot his name a few times uh, over the Who's last this few guy? Weeks, but yeah, this, this new guy is coming on the show. I don't think he has much experience, but uh, Scott Reynolds, ladies and gentlemen, maybe you've heard of him. He is back on the podcast today. And Scott, that voice is starting to come back, isn't it? It is starting to come back. And uh, Jordan Zayner is my favorite uh, Buccaneer fan slash Peter Report fan of all time. So you, you have uh, kind of been through the ringer here, Scott, lately. I know we <laughs> kind of lightly filled in Bucks fans, but also yeah. didn't want to violate HIPAA. So we didn't really want to <laughs> yeah. give away too much of, of what yeah. your situation mm-hmm. was. And also, we didn't know for a long time what the situation was. And Appreciate so, that. thank you. Christine. Yeah, I just, uh, I just, I know that uh, uh, you probably, I'm sure, want to update people a little bit with how you're doing and what the prognosis is moving forward. Yeah. Um, so it started off with a sore throat, um, not COVID. Um, thought it was maybe I wasn't, wasn't ruling it out initially, but as it turns out, I'm 49 years old, Mark, you know, you're older than me, always going to be older than me Mm, for Um, a couple more years as a 64 year old, you know, you've got (laughs) quite a few years on me. So not Bruce yet. Yeah. So, um, uh, this is acid reflux related. It's kind of crazy to think, but it's it's like, um, you know, I usually don't sleep with my head propped up or anything like that. Thank you all. Appreciate the, the welcome backs. Appreciate that very much. <clears throat> so it's acid reflux related. It's kind of crazy. I didn't know that you could lose your voice from acid reflux, but you can if you have it seriously enough. And I, I did. Hmm. And uh, you guys heard me because I didn't do pod. This is like the first podcast I've done right but since end of May. Right. I don't think I did any in June, but you guys no. heard me at, at my worst when mm-hmm. that sore throat was in full effect. I mean, it was awful. Yeah. You couldn't even really talk like at all. Hardly. Yeah. yeah. So um, I've been having, <laughs> I've been going to speech therapy twice a week to learn how to talk again. Cause what happened is, is um, the, the, the muscles uh, in and around my throat um, swelled up with the inflammation from the acid reflux. And, yeah. um, and, and so that, that swelling basically caused my vocal cords to, um, to just get blocked mm-hmm. and I, I couldn't really produce any sounds. It was the weirdest thing. It's, it's amazing how much you talk or how much you take talking for granted, right? Mm-hmm. It just, oh. it's, it's like something we're taught like when we're one years old and we just don't stop. Right. But, um, this is like market for uh, improvement. I'm probably at about 75% right now. I'd say, yeah. you know, maybe 80. Um, I've been talking a lot today, so it's a little weaker than it was this morning. Heading in the right direction, though, so that's good. Um, right. Yeah, and but, you're going to do what you can on today's show, obviously. Yeah. And you got to jump out, and your voice you know, doesn't allow you to go uh, yeah. 100% the whole time. Well, you know, you just I've got some hot out. tea in my Go Bolts lightning cup. So, Do, yeah, do, we'll, do you we'll remember when Mike... Roll. Remember when Mike Williams tried to come back too soon from a hamstring injury, Scott, and he ended up ripping yes. the hamstring from the bone? Let's not hope that you yeah. rip your vocal cords from the throat today, all right? You may be trying to come yeah. back a little too early. I've also decided that this is God's punishment for all your jokes about Uncle Stan over the years. Remember? <laughs> hey, boys, I'm Uncle Stan. John doesn't know Uncle Stan. Oh, I've heard him That's do true. Uncle Stan a few Rest times. Rest in peace. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. I, I've figured out it's 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 God's way of saying, okay, you want to joke about Appreciate Uncle Stan? Jokes. As he's probably sitting beside God right now, yeah. uh, up in heaven right now, watching yeah. this podcast. But uh, really glad you're back, man. And uh, don't overdo it. Do what you can do, and that's good enough. Uh, take yeah. some time off. I know you're going on vacation soon, so enjoy that. And uh, the happiest person that you haven't been able to talk though is, is certainly Logan and 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 Caden. I mean, your your kids, uh, oh, you know, because you couldn't yell at them, you couldn't give them the old uh, rental Dude, speeches and all the yeah, old it, stories of when you were. It's been they were horrible. loving it. I, I've lost every fight to my wife. Ashley, she's oh yeah, she's like she's, she's, unde- she's undefeated in the month of June, right? Like she could say whatever she wanted. I'm right. like sitting here taking my phone, like typing crap in there and like showing it to her, you know, and all that. And, <laughs> I'm like, mm, you know, Look, I don't know how much Celsius you've been able to drink during all this, Scott, but they've got a new flavor dropping right now. I know you know about it. I don't yeah. know if you've got a chance to try it, but for anybody out there who hasn't, the tropical vibe is absolutely hitting right now. Celsius powers active lives every day with essential functional energy. 
the new Tropical Vibe Sparkling Starfruit Pineapple Edition. Man, no sugar, tremendous flavor, like all the flavors that they have. It's really, really great stuff. And also go over to pewterreport.com and vote in our poll. We've got like six different options to pick your favorite Celsius flavor. Let us know what your favorite flavors are. Let Celsius know what your favorite flavors are by voting in that poll over at pewterreport.com. Just go to the homepage, scroll down a little bit, and you'll see that poll there. Uh, vote in that and let us know kind of what your favorite flavor is. I think we got the poll running soon over at YouTube too. We'll have it up there as well. So yeah, definitely check out the start sparkling starfruit pineapple edition Celsius, the tropical vibe. You'll see me drinking on today's show. It's really, really good stuff uh, from Celsius.com. Right. And you can also click those banner ads over at pewreport.com. So here's my little Celsius pitch for today. Mm. Cause I haven't talked about Celsius in over a month, obviously. I can't have any carbonated beverages. That's like right. a big no-no, right? I can't have any caffeine. I have tasted the tropical vibe. It is phenomenal. It's killing me that I I, I really can't have this stuff yet. I, I will. I'm, I'm on medicine. I'm, I'm on the road to recovery. But right. folks, Celsius is real. Okay. I was a Celsius drinker and uh, it had nothing to do with my problems, by the way. This is, this is like just a hereditary. My mom has GERD and all that stuff. But mm. I'm telling you. Like not being able to drink Celsius and wake up and get that that uh, you know that that surge of energy without the crash like right. it's it's killing me. I've not nearly been as productive without <laughs> Celsius. Like June, I, I was not trying to slack or anything. It just took me longer to do my work because I didn't have that Celsius right. uh, you know burst of energy. So it's it's real and legit. You don't know how legit Celsius is oh, yeah. until you're off of it. And right. Like, no question. Crap. <laughs> no question about it. But even in the midst of that Celsius crisis that you've been yes. in, you have managed to crank out some work. You haven't been yeah. able to be on the pod, but you've been working your tail off on these written articles that we have going up at pewreport.com. One of them is your top 30 bucks of all time. And obviously we've had some input too here and there yes. to break ties yeah. and things like that. But for the most part, your list was put the list was put together by you and your extensive you know, history with the team, knowledge of the team. Obviously, Mark's got a little bit of that as yep. well. But I have to ask you this before we get started. If two people hypothetically that worked for pewterreport.com went on a show like the Pewter Report podcast, not this exact podcast, not maybe Mark and I, but two other people, right. and they ranked their top 10 bucks of all time, yeah. and one of them had Leroy Selman seventh, <laughs> would you say that is like egregious, fireable, or more like slap on the wrist, or like, oh no, I like going outside the box. That might be worthy of a promotion. Or well, How would um, you range that? Can I use the term stupid? <laughs> yes. You can. Yes. Okay, I will. That's right, John. That's stupid. Okay. Hey, what do you think? Why do you think it was me? You don't think Mark did that? No. no he watches the podcast, John. He yeah. watches it. Yeah. He can't no, contribute, stupid, but huh? he watched it. Yes. Yeah. And the, the reason why is, is because Leroy was, uh, yeah. He was an instant impact guy, right? He had five sacks as a rookie. He had 11 his second season. And in 1979, so that's his fourth year in the league, he's the NFL Defensive Player of the Year. The only thing that stopped him from, you know, from, from just getting sacks beyond belief was he had a, a back injury in his prime at the, at the Pro Bowl, right, hmm. in 1984. And and, and that just uh, Bowl, by the way yeah that, that just right, that I mean that, that just abruptly ended his career. This is a guy that probably had two maybe three more double digit sack seasons in him, and um, and then I think you're you're talking about him as one of the best defensive ends of all time. Not not a Reggie White. We're not going to put him in that category, but right below Reggie White. I mean, like in yeah. terms of, of of that level. Instead, hmm. when you think about Leroy Selman. In terms of pass rushers, he's probably on that third tier. He's not Lawrence Taylor. He's not Derek Thomas. He's not, you know, Reggie White. He's he's down there a little bit. But I think if not for that back injury and in, at the Pro Bowl, this is a player that was just dominant um, with power, speed, everything. And right. um, as and, a and he was three the, four he, defensive end. The Buccaneers yes. played a three four. Think about that. He is a hand in the ground. Defensive end, right. uh, leading the team in sacks and being the NFL player of the year in 1979. I mean, 
Again, it wasn't like he was a stand-up outside linebacker yeah. that just rushed every play. He had run responsibilities, too. Obviously, first, to secure the yeah. edge, all of those things that a 3-4 DN has to do, the dirty work, and was still able to be a dominant pass right. rusher as well. Well, I just – I hadn't been wrong since I came aboard PeterReport.com, so I just <laughs> – I just So you were waiting, due, right, waiting. John? You were due. I was due. Yeah. At some point, it was yeah. going to happen, and if it's going to happen, yeah. at least it's at a time period before I was born. So yeah. I guess everybody's agreeing that I'm taking the on. I know I did text mm-hmm. Trevor Sikama that night. Because right. I was like, all right, how off am I? You know, let's get another young buck in here right. that might not be like and, and Trevor and I told him I was like, what's more egregious to you, Leroy Selman at number seven overall in the greatest bucks of all time, or Levante David outside the top ten at what would you have marked ten or 12, 11, eleven or twelve? Yeah, 11. eleven or twelve, something like that. Yeah. And he was like, wow, you're both idiots. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think he agreed that I was dumber. But he yeah. had Selman fourth for for his rankings. But no, it was, it was fun. It's been fun to kind of go through this list for me that you've had yeah. this top thirty and. Right. Learn about some of the Bucks. Like I know a lot of these names, right. but I don't know necessarily the Bucks history with players like well, Carl Williams and even yeah. Douglas. You know, so, so, the, been- so the interesting thing is, is this is a list that Mark and I did several years ago, mm-hmm. and this is really like the third kind of incarnation of this. I think we did 2014, 2017, and then now. Right. And and the thing is, is with this list, um, you know, it, it's it's pretty much stayed the same in terms of of the people. Uh, mm-hmm. So some of the the rankings have changed. Some guys have moved up. Some have moved down. There had been some new entries, right? Because of the last four years, we've got a guy like Tom Brady, right, mm-hmm. he came to town, and he deserves to be on that list even after one year, right? Um, and really, what goes into this list are two things. It's it's the the impact you had on the franchise um, from a from a measurable standpoint, right? It's like did you know is your name in the record books? Did you leave your mark on this organization? And that's one thing I got from from Herm Edwards, who was the former defensive backs coach and the assistant head coach under Tony Dungy. He would tell his players, it's like, listen, when you come here, you know, two things, earn a roster spot, make your mark, make your mark on this team, you know. And, uh, and I think that the best way you can do it is to set records, to be one of the best Buccaneers of all time, and that shows up in the record book. The second area is not the individual, but the team. Did you help your team get to the playoffs and win games and win, win championships? So just because Brady's been here one year, he is on the list. I can tell you where. Obviously, he hasn't appeared yet. Right, because I think we're what are we up to? Number eighteen or so, seventeen, eighteen. I, I think we today was sixteen through eighteen. Okay, we so, so we don't know the top fifteen. Yeah, Fans so we, don't know the top fifteen. Tom yet. Brady's in the top fifteen. I'm not telling you where. Right. But the reason why is because he did both of those things. He he, he set the all time right. uh, touchdown passing record, and with his forty three touchdowns, because he scored three rushing touchdowns, that's forty three touchdowns for one person in a single season, and he won a Super Bowl. Oh, and by the way, he was the MVP, right? So, so yeah. that right there is he accomplished more in one year than someone like you know Eric Curry did in five, right? As a former first round draft pick. So longevity means something, but where where, where that means something is like if you're Ronnie Barber or Derek Brooks, you're going to be higher because you're greater for longer for this franchise, mm-hmm. right? Um, than someone else who, like Donnie Abraham, who only played one contract or so and, you know, played five years, I think, and then he was gone. So, you know, it, Rondé was here to do a lot more, mm-hmm. right, than, than Donnie, which is why Rondé is higher than Donnie. And, of course, you throw in the Super Bowl factor, too. Mark, what have you thought about? Because you obviously have extensive knowledge of the Bucks history as well, too. So, and you've probably had little squabbles with the list, but what have you thought about the first 15 or the back 15, I guess, as Scott's yeah. released them? Anybody you've disagreed with? I don't, th- there's nobody I've disagreed with, except I would have had Doug Williams a little higher. And I know Scott, I mean, even debated, you know, does he deserve to be in that top 30? And um, as Tom Bucks fan just pointed out, I'll, I'll pull it up on the thing here. Um, I mean, it's it's hard to unless you saw Doug Williams and you were part of it and saw what he meant to the franchise. And again, as Scott was talking about his criteria, statistically, Doug was terrible, right? I mean, 47.4% career pass or something like that. 
But yeah. again, when you look at John McKay's offense, it was the most predictable offense. It made Tony Dungy's offense look like <laughs> Mike Martz. I mean, seriously. <laughs> You know, student body right, student body left, drop back and try and find Giles. I mean, there was just no wide receivers. It was just a terrible, uh, unimaginative offense. But well, yeah, Kevin. Uh, House. But that you was can't say no receivers. Kevin House was there. Was there Kevin? Right. But he was there, and he got there in 1980. Had 500 and something yards. He didn't really have a breakout year till 81. 82 was the strike year. So I mean, he only played two years with Doug Williams. But you're talking okay. about guys like Gerald Carter, uh, Morris Owens, uh, yeah. uh, Larry Mucker. Was a tight end for this team, Larry Mucker. Never Trevor, heard of that guy, but you can't Trevor, be good with the name. Of <laughs> Tre Trevor still doesn't believe that that was a real name. He still thinks Scott either. and I are pulling his leg. Look it up in the Buccaneer history book. Larry Mucker was a tight end for this football team. So again, there just wasn't a lot of talent. Uh, I mean, of course, they had Ricky Bell and Jerry Eckwood running the football. So, you know, those were very good running backs. And John McKay came from the USC line of thinking when he had a guy like OJ Simpson, where you're going to run the ball as much as possible and play good right. defense. And that's what the team was built on. But anyway, point is that was really the only thing that I would have had Doug considerably higher. Um, and the fact is he's one of the, uh, one of the, the ring of honor members. I think that should go yeah. into it a little bit too. The, the Glazer certainly felt that he was a little bit higher, but other than that, I think the players themselves, the order I might have a little squabble with from here to, you know, a little bit here and there, but but I think the players are spot on, and, and I've seen the complete list, so I agree with it all the way yeah. up to the top. So, so my my next podcast appearance, because uh, I've got to got to go to Vegas to help rehab my voice. <laughs> um, <laughs> Drew Key ought to be great for it, Scott. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 118 exactly. temperatures should be yeah. wonderful yeah. for the voice. Man, that's going to be yeah. something. I hope <laughs> you're just really on, I'm stay hydrate. on your schedule, and yeah, I was going to say, I hope you hydrate. No doubt about it. Do everything your doctor's telling you to do there. Oh, yeah. But my next uh, scheduled appearance for the podcast will be the 13th, which is Tuesday the 13th. Now, uh, I'll be on with Mark. Uh, John, you've got that day off. And um, yes. and Mark and I will, will kind of wrap up the, the top 15, and we'll talk about um, – some of the, the decision making they went into the top 15 the top 10 the top five so that'd be fun so you know make sure to, to book your your, mm -hmm. your calendar for the the 13th which is a tuesday where we'll really kind of get into the uh the top 15 part of the top 30 that we've, right. we've uh, unveiled here and got a fat five coming this friday that um i i list at the request of uh, i believe adam who's one of our subscribers he he dm'd me and said hey I'd love to see not just a list of the top 30 players, but how about like the top five players at every position <clears throat> who can really have kind of an encyclopedia yeah. of who the greatest Buccaneers are. I said, wow, it's a great idea. So I'm doing that for this week's Fab Five on Friday. Yeah, that'll be great too. That'll be great content. Yeah. Another great thing that you guys are just kind of, we're all just kind of uh, enjoying and, and starting to experience right now is this new partnership we have with Underdog Fantasy. If you don't know, and I saw some people already had their avatars changed to Underdog Fantasy uh, on their YouTube pages. Appreciate that. Appreciate the support. You probably saw me announce it on Twitter earlier today. But yeah, I'll talk about Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy, if you don't know, because they're a little bit new on the scene, but they are taking off. They've got some great support from big name people like Adam Schefter, Kevin Durant, and others. Uh, what they are is the, the best and easiest place to play fantasy football uh, for big cash prizes. On Underdog Fantasy, you just draft. That's what's so great about it. No need to worry about waivers or lineups or injuries. Underdog kind of handles it all for you in their best ball league format. You go to underdogfantasy.com or download the app draft a season-long best ball team, and that's it. There's no in-season management. I personally, as somebody who is obviously incredibly busy in-season, I love that. You just It's all about the draft. It's not about, oh, we got to go out. This guy's taking over in the waiver. No, it just pulls your best scores from the week from your draft, the team that you drafted. So it puts all the emphasis on basically that draft and making sure that you assess your team appropriately in that draft. They're going to give you $25 when you sign up. So you can take a free shot at a $1 million grand prize in their fantasy football tournament. That's right. You can get a free $25 in bonus cash on underdog fantasy. If you use the promo code pewter, P E W T E R is the deposit. I love underdog because it's just so easy to use. The mobile app is slick. The website's user friendly. So do what I've been doing. Go to underdogfantasy.com, join a league, draft the team, and that's it. You're good 
for the season and use that promo code pewter p-e-w-t-e-r you can do it on the app store or the google play store get underdogfantasy.com get that free 25 dollars in bonus cash use that promo code get signed up we are going to have some pewterreport.com leagues that are going to be starting up we're very excited about those we'll have more announcements about that as the month of july starts to get underway um and and continues on closer to training camp which by the way guys Bucks training camp, uh, we're getting close to the end of today, yeah. so you could say it's about 18 days away. It is crazy to me. Scott, it just feels like we were doing that post-Super Bowl podcast in the press box at <laughs> Raymond James Stadium after they beat the Chiefs, and now here we are less than yeah. three weeks from the start. Guys, of the we're 65 days away from the season opener. 65. Know, that's 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 insane, isn't it? I mean, that's and, and just once crazy. training camp starts, you know, it just is so fast. Until, yeah. I mean, you, tr- you look up and it's like, oh, because you're around every day, you're watching them play every day, you're writing about them every day, and all the days just start to run right together. And you look up and it's week one. And um, yeah. it, we're going to get some preseason action. What preseason, first preseason game is yeah. August 14th, I believe. So, what that, I don't know, add, you know, 20 some days or whatever to that 18, you know. And so we've got uh, still a little ways till that first game, but right. we're going to get to see some of these guys. And one of the guys we're going to get to see is Cameron Kinley. The Bucks said today, That's or right. it was announced today, that Cameron Kinley is going to be able to to play and join the Bucks for training camp. And so that's really great news, obviously, uh, for him because he really stood out at rookie minicamp. It's going to be kind of awesome to see what he's going to be able to do against better competition now, Scott. No doubt about it. And um, uh, so, yeah, I, I'm excited to, to see. Sometimes you get to stand up for what you believe in and, and uh, you know, and, and be prepared to make some waves. And he did. And, and uh, you know, thankfully the armed services, uh, you know, listened, the armed, armed forces listened and, and, and granted him this waiver. I think that's the right thing to do. Right. Um, you know, he's not getting out of his, his service. He's simply just deferring it, which is fine. You know, I think that's, it's the appropriate thing. You've seen that, that done in years past and it, and it was, it's good to, to see that happen. I wanted to comment too. Drew is exactly right. Um, <laughs> this isn't, this is not the right time for the bolts to be in the Stanley cup during my recovery because, you know, uh, we were actually going to talk about them if they'd won last night. Yeah, I know. About yeah. I, I, I would have, I would have had, you know, um, I probably could be talking a little bit better if not for, you know, every other day I'm going like, Yanni, you know, <laughs> Stammer! I'm surprised. Look at that. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. impressive, dude. I'm that's yeah, too I'm loud. I, I feel, I feel the vocal cords shredding as you do that, Scott. Stop it. We, <laughs> we don't Williams need Hamstring. Mike Williams part two. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm trying not to push it. You know, I'm going to tell Ashley to put a muzzle on you on, on tomorrow night for the game. Just put a, <laughs> Put a muzzle on you completely where you can't. Well, tomorrow noise. night's going to be a tense one, right? Because, I mean, it's not a big deal if you're up 3 0 to lose game four, in my opinion, especially the way they lost it. I mean, they, they didn't play their best game, still could yeah. easily won. Like, right. but game five, you lose and it goes back to Montreal. The pressure, the, oh man, the pressure is is on. And, and you yeah, know, people no, people were commenting, well, they get to, you know, Jane Caster, idiot. Um, you know, oh, we want them to win at home. Statement. Obviously, somebody no, who doesn't understand the concept of sports, you, any <laughs> opportunity, these guys are professional yes. athletes. They want to win every time they play. They yes. want to win at checkers yes. in the locker room. They're competitive. Yes. They're not thinking about, oh, we want to do it on the home ice. It's just the dumbest yeah. thing ever. You guys now, really don't think she was joking around. All huh? the, it, it just you don't even, it doesn't don't matter. It's just home. stupid. You just don't, yes. don't mess with the mojo. No. Right. If you asked Victor Edman and John Cooper and Andre Vasilevsky and Kucherov yeah. and all those guys, you know, yeah. uh, would you rather fly to Mars and win the Stanley Cup tonight or win it at home in Tampa, you know, like next or week? Maybe, possibly. maybe win it, right. Yeah, right. possibly. Right. They're going to like, yeah, Elon Musk, um, yeah. Richard Branson, whoever can get me to, the, to Mars faster, like <laughs> book me, like tonight, because we're going to get to Mars and win the Stanley Cup. I mean, that, that's just what you do as an athlete. Yeah. Right. You don't wait, you win. Yeah, that's insane. And, I, and obviously, I didn't even think you know the effort wasn't a concern at all. Just they they didn't quite weren't as quite as crisp as they normally yeah, yeah, yeah. are. But I, I still mean, feel they very had, confident. They they ding three off the post. If one of those yeah, goes exactly. in, it's over, yes. and we're we're planning the the yeah. boat parade in a couple days once the yeah. hurricane and goes I, and by. And I still think we're, we will be, but we'll see. Yeah. I mean, that's obviously yeah. Montreal is definitely resilient. There's no question about well, that. Listen, but it's been fun I, to watch that. My only hockey comment, and we'll move it back on to football, is this is like a JV team the Lightning are playing right now. I mean, really, Carolina was better. Florida was better. The Islanders, Islanders were much better. certainly better. Okay. Yeah. This is like a JV team. I, well, I Las just, Vegas is probably better. I don't know how they ended up losing. How, you know, how did Las they, Vegas. Lose they lose to this team? They lost to yeah. Flurry because Flurry <laughs> gave up that goal, and then that changed the whole thing once they were going to win that game. Yeah. Okay. That, that turned the whole bucks. series for sure. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, I mean, no. No question. It's been uh, – 
it's been quite one sided. I don't think. Oh that my! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on, Tony. Whoa! Listen, Tony. Listen, Tony. Tony. listen. <laughs> listen. I I am too smart and savvy to let Joe Bucks fan. Uh, plus, plus, Tony. I've always been Scott's happen. food tester at One Buccaneer Place. That's he true. always makes That's me test fact. his food first. Yes. Like the court yeah. jester. So, and so yeah. far, I've only been poisoned twice. And, also, uh, they haven't fed us a one bar place in a long time. I would know because I, <laughs> since I've <laughs> been there, we there. Yeah. Exactly. and I've been looking forward to it. I will so, say, yeah. John, John Scott will tell you they try and poison him every time they serve seafood because Scott is oh, highly God, allergic fish. to seafood. Uh, yeah, when they do the fish down, like three wow. days in a row in training camp, he, uh, he gets yeah. a little testy. It's ridiculous. That's funny. Yeah. No, I I mean, I think it's been – to me, the pressure's on – I mean, I know you all don't care about me, but my sons are playing tonight, and so my, I just need thoughts and prayers for me and my heart and my voice tonight as the Suns uh, take on the Bucks in game one. I didn't know you were a Suns fan. Oh, yeah, you know, Suns fan. You grow up in Pittsburgh, you got to find your team, man. And when I was a That's kid, true, yeah. oh, Steve Nash, Sean Marion, Amari Stoudemire, Boris Dia, Leandro Barbosa. Oh, okay. yeah, it's a fun offense. For me, it was Charles games. Barkley, uh, Dan Marley. Oh, those guys were fun. That was, was a little before those were the me. Suns. Penny Hardaway. Yeah. Yeah, after he, he left Orla- he went after he left Orlando, he went to Phoenix. Did he? Okay. Yeah. Was, yeah, anyway. he, did, he was there for a while, yeah. But yeah, so I'll be uh I'll be excited about that yeah. game tonight and to see what happens. But oh. in the meantime, we do have yeah. our focus ahead on this training yes. camp for the Bucks and what's going to be coming up. And one of the things you'll be talking about in an upcoming fab is 20, the <laughs> things they got to watch for, right? Scott in yeah. this training camp. Can you give us like one or two maybe or some like some nuggets some things that have been rolling around your head as you've been voiceless and just wondering and thinking about the bucks what yeah. have been one or two training um, camp oriented thoughts that have been rolling around in your head you know i, I think a couple of things and they're not really training camp like related um because i think i think training camp has become so homogenized right it's like i mean mark there's a day when you and i were watching two-a-day practices right mm-hmm. like physical full padded like yeah. full t- it was almost like a game it wasn't right. like it was just like there were it, it's like the only difference between preseason games and like two day practices under John Gruden where the preseason games were at night at the stadium right yeah i mean that's that's pretty much the, the difference they were so physical back then now they're glorified OTAs with pads on that's really what they are so when i look, I look at training camp I, i'm looking for the running back battle between Rojo and, and, and Fournette. I think that's going to be really interesting to watch because Giovanni Bernard is just taking those third down opportunities away. And that really squeezes the amount of, of, of opportunities that Ronald Jones and or Fournette will have to, you know, to make things happen on first and second down. I mean, the, the, I, I think those two guys are going to be fighting for two downs rather than fighting for three. Because yeah. Geo is going to have third down, so right. to me, I, th- I think that that's something to watch. And I think, kind of peeking ahead to the season, the the two things that are that are on top of my mind right now, aside from you know how brilliant Blaine Gabbert's going to be in training camp, is probably Tristan Wirfs. You know, um, I, I I don't I don't see a sophomore slump coming for him. I don't. I think he's a mature kid. I think he's, mm-hmm. you know, he, he's Paul Gruber you know you know what i'm talking about mark it's like yeah it's like like uh every year you're espn now it's espn and nfl network you know oh you draft this guy in the first round he's a franchise tackle and you stick him, stick there him out him there 10 years exactly right? that's tristan Wirfs. yeah that's tristan Wirfs. that was paul gruber right and yeah. I, th- I think they've got another paul gruber type but i'm looking for that i'm looking to see to hit, maintain that, yeah, I'm going to give up one sack this year, and if I do, it's going to be to an all-pro caliber player, right? Um, so I'm looking for that. I also want to see, because Shaq Barrett talked a really big game in his press conference. Yeah. You know what? I'm inclined to believe him. I'll believe Shaq Barrett until he proves me wrong. Hmm. Shit, the, Shaq Barrett, and there's certain guys, and you remember Donald Penn when he got that big contract, and you might even be been next to him for that inter- interview, Mark. When Donald Penn, the former left tackle for the Bucks, got this big contract, you know, I went up and congratulate him. Hey, congrats, man. That, that's a great deal. You're, you know, you've really turned into a really good, you know, left tackle. And he's like, I'm scared, man. I'm scared. I'm like, <laughs> what are you scared about? He's like, man, I got all this pressure on me now. Like, it, like the, I feel like the spotlight's on me because I'm making all this money now, you know. And it's it's kind of like that, that, you know, are you the hunter or the hunted, right? Mm. And I think that sometimes – 
Um, and even Ryan Jensen opened up to me and he said, Hey, you know, I, I got, I got this contract, you know, came here as a big free agent, the highest paid center. And, you know, as it turns out, boy, you know, I, I, I kind of got fat and I didn't play that well. Then he lost weight and then really has played well these last two years. He's, this is the Ryan Jensen they looked at that, that they wanted mm-hmm. that he's become. But sometimes it's like when you get the big money, you either get fat and lazy <laughs> and, and, and underperform, or you make sure that you earn every penny yeah. and you want to prove the organization that I'm worth this much money. Thank you for investing in me. And uh, like you, you thought that you were, you know, doing That's the right thing. Yeah, you, you thought I was I was yeah. gonna you know earn every penny. I'm gonna earn every penny and then some. And I think yeah. that's Shaq. Yeah. And so I, I think this guy um, didn't like the eight sacks last year. I think mm-hmm. he liked the nineteen and a half. And I think that he he knows too. He's mm-hmm. he's not twenty three or twenty four. Oh, well, I've got you know a, a decade of dominance left in me. No, he's twenty eight, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. he knows he's got about three or four years where he's got to max out his body. Because he's going to lose a step at some point. See, it happens to everybody. It happens to me on rice. When it happens, you fall off a cliff. So mm-hmm. I think Shaq Barrett, um, I just want to see how high he can climb that mountain. Can he get to – I know he can get to 10. I know he can get to 12. Can he get to 15? Can he get to 20? You know, I, I want to see how far Shaq can go. Speaking of uh, how far you can go, you've got the opportunity to earn some money this week. Over with our friends at mybookie.ag. In the world of sports, the offseason is a time to relax and a regroup after a hard-fought season, but playing with mybookie gives you the choice to decide when your season begins and ends. At mybookie.ag, you can bet on hundreds of games and leagues from around the world. Whether it's a game day parlay or a long shot winner, mybookie's got you covered. If you're looking for something to bet on, look no further than UFC 264 and a highly anticipated rematch between Dustin Poirier and Conor McGregor. McGregor is currently listed as an underdog in the fight and bets on Poirier to win by KO would pay out nearly two to one. Regardless of whether you're backing Poirier or McGregor this weekend, take advantage of pre-fight props or bet the matches live to shift the odds in your favor and come out on top. Sign up today with MyBookie and use the promo code Pewter, P-E-W-T-E-R, and you'll receive up to $1,000 in bonus money when you make your first deposit. That's 1000 bucks in extra cash when you make your first deposit with MyBookie using that promo code Pewter. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with MyBookie. All hey right, guys, so we've got it's, these, it's, it's ahead, getting Mark. a little it's getting a little windy outside. Is what is there anything going on weather wise that I should know about? I, I, this is what I've been told. I, I'm a newbie here in this area. This is pro, I guess my first real t- tropical storm. We've had That's some right. storms. We've had some power outages. Maybe we expect those things. If there's not a podcast tomorrow, everyone knows why. It's because we don't <laughs> John, have power. John, we've been warning people. It is hurricane season. We've been mm-hmm. warning people the last two months on this podcast. You've got to get your property taken care of. You've got to get your property, your your automobile, your life taken care of. And there's no better place to do it than our good friends over at Briar Greaves Insurance Company. Now, looks like we're going to skirt a major disaster, right? Maybe it's going to be a one. It's going to kind of skirt the coast. Probably not to take a direct hit to Tampa. If this isn't a wake-up call that you need to call Briar Greaves and make sure you're covered for the next storm. And trust me, there will be another one. This is the first a hurricane, one of the earliest hurricanes that we've seen, the fifth name storm. That's the earliest we've seen it over the last 20 years. Uh, forecasters have told us there's going to be more. Make sure you are covered. All you got to do is give them a call. 813-876-4166. Call Sam, call Briar. Say, look, this is what I currently have. What do I need? Am I good? Can you save me some money? Scott, if somebody said, I'm going to hand you $500 tomorrow for doing, you know, for making a 15 minute phone call, what are you doing? You're making that call. I'm I'm making it and taking it. Absolutely. That's all you got to do. Now, there's no guarantee they're going to save you money. The great thing about Briar Greaves is they're going to be upfront and honest with you. They're going to tell you, you know what? You've got really good coverage at a really good price. Or they're going to tell you, we can save you some money. BriarGreavesInsurance.com. Give them a call today. 813-876-4166-876-4166. Proud sponsor of the Pewter Report Podcast. Good question here from Lawrence Lowe. He, he so very good, basically a statement. Actually, rumor has it no team would offer Shaq more than the Bucks. There might be a chip on his shoulder to show them what they missed out on. Yeah, I think it's a good point. That could be another motivating factor. I could definitely see Shaq. I mean, somebody who's been snubbed 
many, many times, you know, over the course of his career um, yeah. in playing football. I could see that being that, motivational that's an for indictment, him too. That's an indictment of of 31 other teams doubting his ability, right? I mean, mm-hmm. that's essentially yeah. what they're saying. He, he was he he was he was left off the first team All Pro ballot after nine and a half sacks which was a travesty. He didn't win defensive yeah. player of the year after 19 and a half sacks. That's, I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 it's insanity oh. how he was overlooked. And then in free agency, he, he had six this force year. fumbles or seven. Force fumbles how do you not make the pro bowl? with yeah. 19 and He did make the, pro, he made the pro bowl. Guy. He did make the pro bowl. Yeah. I'll give him that, but he did. He wasn't the first team all pro. Yeah. I believe yeah. TJ Watt. Is that the guy in Pittsburgh, the defensive end up there, John? I believe yeah, he, he had, ended up. What do you have? 16 and a half that year? Something, something like yeah, that. something like yeah. that. He had less than Shaq, and yet he yeah. had less. I remember talking to Pete Prisco at the Pro Bowl, and Pete told me, he goes, You know, I'm just not really sold on this guy. And uh yeah, ch- well, ch- he's gonna have a he's gonna have a chip on his shoulder. Again, I don't think anybody expected a repeat of 19 and a half sacks because yeah. he was gonna draw more attention, certainly, than he yeah. did. Yeah, but and, and um, Ace does a good job. Ace says here, you know, he did a good job pressuring quarterbacks, even if it wasn't sacks. And he's right. Like true. Shaq's uh, pressure numbers, yeah. I think, by, by a couple <clears throat> sites are among right. the highest in the league over the last two years. So he's done a great job in that regard. Pressure can, numbers can be, you know, weird and, and mean different things. But I think in general, he's done a great job of one on one situations. He's certainly, to me, he's not an elite talent where some of the guys ahead of him, like, I don't think he'll ever be on the level of a Nick Bosa, a Joey Bosa, right. a Miles Garrett, a TJ Watt. Like, those guys to me are just more gifted than he is sure. and that's okay i still think he can be a top 10 edge defender in the league we've yeah. seen two lists come out recently uh pro football focus has him in their top 10 i think he was ninth for them maybe i want to say ahead of von miller by the way i know he's coming back from injury and chandler yeah. jones who's also coming back from injury and then espn is doing a neat thing i've been trying to do stories on it every day for our site but they're actually pulling 50 executives, players, and coaches getting their opinion and their insight and then kind of taking the voting of those people and and kind of stacking up players. So I think it's great because it gets a, a, a very robust group of opinions. Then obviously they also you know are pulling it from people who know what they're talking about and getting kind of ranking players because of that. So I think Shaq Barrett, he was outside of the top 10 for that, but he was their first guy out kind of. So I think, yeah, in that nine to 11, 12 range and across the league, that's pretty fair ranking for him. Now, Jason Pierre-Paul has not shown up on any of these lists. PFF had a top 32 edge defenders in the league, and Pierre-Paul was not on it. Not so sure about that. I've said yeah, before, I think he's a ridiculous. little overrated, but yeah. you can't tell me he's not a top 32 edge defender. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, you know what? Scott, Scott is – Scott, I, I'm with Scott on this, John. I know you're more of a pressure guy, as, as Josh Allen just pointed out. Not a more of a pressure <laughs> he's guy. Being you put more. But, but yeah, I know. <laughs> But Scott and I have always, you know, we pressures are well and good. Get the damn quarterback on the ground, though, man. That's right. uh, that that's where you that's your bread and butter. I mean, that's what people remember. Nobody's going to remember. You know, I led the league in pressures, but I had eight and a half sacks. I mean, you, you got to get the quarterback on the ground. That's when things happen too. That's when fumbles mm-hmm. happen. That's it's it's a, it's it's such a it, it can be such a momentum changer in the game. I mean, right. You know, well, yeah, pressure I, can cause interception maybe, but yeah. you know, getting getting to the quarterback and throwing him on his ass is uh, is what gets gets that stadium rocking and fired up. Yeah, and I mean, I, I think with sacks, it's it's definitive, right? Uh, like because a sack ends a play, right? It, it it ends it. A pressure, yeah, can lead to an incompletion. It can lead to an interception, right? Those are good pressures. But how many times have we seen? I mean, uh, you know, go back to to the the, 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 the uh, Brad Johnson, right? He would stand in the pocket, get pressured, take a hit, still deliver a strike to Joe right. Jervicious or Keenan McCardell or or Keyshawn Johnson. You know, okay, the the defensive player got got credit for the pressure, <laughs> pressure. but it still resulted yeah. in a first, first down, down. Or touchdown. So, yeah. but it, it, those two go hand in hand, though. It's, yeah, it's, for sure. And and Tom 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 brings up a good point just about the fact that it's a function of the team. I mean, the team pass rush is is if you see teams that are consistently yes. good year after year after year after year, they have good scheme, they have more than one player that can get to the quarterback, and they usually have versatility up front too. I think the addition of Joe Tryon gives them some more versatility up front with their packages. Now you've got a guy who could be a competent rusher off the edge and you can move Jason Pierre Paul around. You've got Vea back. So you're kind of guaranteeing Pierre Paul and a matchup one-on-one on the inside. So yeah, I think that those kind of things, I, I I think a nice season could be in store for both of those guys. And so it's definitely going to be fun to see what they've accomplished. These lists are kind of coming out on ESPN and I love looking around the league and seeing what these rankings are tomorrow. ESPN has got uh, the top 10 and in, in, in off ball linebackers in the league. Um, that are coming up uh, for them. And so we'll see tomorrow if Levante David and Devin White both managed to make that list. going to be fun to see what league 
uh, executives, coaches, personnel people, and players around the league think of those Bucks off-ball linebackers. So really good stuff. Want to get to wrap, uh, Robert Farmer's super chat here and just mention yeah. it as we wrap up the show. But uh, $5 super chat, we appreciate that from Robert and earlier from Lawrence as well. Uh, Thank super you. chats, hard to come by in the summer, but I appreciate you all helping us <laughs> yeah, out yeah. here. And I know as we get training camp and the season back underway, we'll get hopefully more of those from you all as well. Those have been huge for us. Um, Robert says, welcome back, Scott. How do you guys feel about the DBs? Are they the biggest question mark on the team? I know, Scott, your voice is going a little here and see mark what you we've talked about this a little yeah. bit mark in recent yeah. shows but what do you think about this this db group or are we uh are we st- or is this the big question mark on the team going into 2021 i think from a depth percentage i mean depth perspective it is i mean i think the three guys are the three guys and you hope that the sean murphy bunting can be more consistent over 16 games and jamel dean that's another guy that you talked about on, on the last show that we did needing to get that consistency there were games where he uh was as good as any cornerback in the league and there were other games where it looked like he was watching another game the giants game in particular so the consistency yeah. part of things but i think the talent's there but the question mark is if, if one of these guys goes down for an extended period of time how much is this defense going to suffer? What is Todd Bowles going to have to do to try and cover up uh, a, a missing guy? Is Herb Miller that guy? Is is, is Ross the, that guy? Um, you know, maybe Cameron Kinley steps in and becomes a, a a depth guy. I doubt it, but you just don't know. That's the great thing about yeah. training camp, and that'll be something that really again when you, we start looking at training camp and battles to watch. The three guys are going to be the three guys, and and the two, two safeties are going to be there. But who is going to win those backup jobs? Because we saw. Injuries happen in this in 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 the ba- in the secondary uh, last right. year. Nothing devastating, no season-ending injuries, but there were games that, that players missed. Uh, but that depth to me is 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 the big question mark, uh, Robert. When when I look at it, who's going to be the backups, and, and that's going to be the fun battles to watch in camp for me. Yeah, I think for me, since Mark's already touched on the cornerbacks, uh, I'll just wrap up with this. Um, you've got three really good safeties. You got Jordan Whitehead. You got, you know, um, obviously Antoine Winfield, you know, junior. Um, mm. and, and then you got Mike uh, Edwards. You know, Edwards. And, yeah. and I, I think that that all three of those guys are starting caliber players. How do you yeah. find how do you find ways to get Edwards on the field? Because when he's on there, he's an impact player. But then you you have a hard time taking Whitehead off because he brings the toughness, the ability to cover mm. under, underneath. And then, you know, Winfield is just a star in the making. So it's like, how do you get Edwards on the field? I think that, um, and I agree with everything you said, Mark, the three corners are one thing. The three safeties are another, and it's a good problem to have. Yeah. You know? um, whereas the cornerback depth, yeah, that that might be a bad problem uh, if something happens to those guys. But how do you get Mike Edwards on the field? Because the guy can make some plays. And I think Todd Bowles showed – some instances late in the season where working him into the, the lineup was a good thing. So, right. A good I think, yeah, I think it's going to be huge to tap in Antoine Winfield's versatility this year. You know, they need to be able to figure out can, where all key can he play? Can he help them in multiple spots? Can he play inside? They don't have a true nickel. It's not really Sean yeah. Murphy Bunting's best position, although he grew it a little bit to the end of last year. But I yeah. still think if you could play him outside, you could play Winfield in the slot situationally, and you could play Mike Edwards at free safety more often. Let Jordan White do his thing, you know, be the box guy, be the blitzer, be the deep guy on occasion, the right. too high guy. You know, you, you find everybody kind of rolls that they can shine in that might be the best option for the secondary and it might give them a lot more answers than they had last year or when they struggled throughout a lot of the year especially with smaller shiftier types of players where sean murphy bunting just really really struggled in the slot and nice nice having ross cocker around too good point yep. i saw somebody i think josh pointed that josh yep. allen pointed that out about cocker let's yeah he's it's that was a nice signing for them lawrence another five dollar super chat coming up clutch here vita is probably the most important piece Devin and Shaq had more sacks when Vita's on the field. I yep. hope the DB can improve uh, this year with consistency. Agreed, Lawrence, good points. I think Vita opens things up for everybody in the interior. Not like Devin yeah. can't get home without <laughs> yeah. him. But when you yeah. have to commit two guys to Vita, yeah, definitely. It, you like your options on A-gap blitzes for sure. Scott talked a lot about that um, throughout last year for sure. So, uh, yeah, the last one from Bucks time. I'll answer real quickly before we before we uh, head out uh, for the day. Bucks time 12 wants to know, I've asked this before, who learned more last year, Byron or Brady? I think Byron learned more from Brady. We'll never really know the answer to that question, yeah. but I feel pretty confident in saying that both guys learned a lot from each other. And it wasn't necessarily learning from scratch. 
I think a lot of it is just learning each other, how each other likes to operate, what each other likes in certain situations, right. how each other understands the offense and communicates the offense better to other people. It's more learning about working together than it is growing individually, like getting better or something like that. I think those things still happen for those guys probably, but I think their situation was definitely more about cohesiveness together uh, as a group for sure. So plenty of welcome backs for Scott. Good to see you back on the show today, Scott. We've got a great back. week. Good. We got a great week lined up too. Yeah. Honestly, this is just the 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 start. Uh, tomorrow on the show, what we got Ryan Griffin coming on the show, right, Mark? Bucks number two quarterback. Bucks number second, two, second best quarterback on the roster, Scott. Second yeah. or mate? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Scott like is most, not going to be on that show. Handsome quarterback, yeah. <sighs> For understandable reasons, Scott will not be on that show, and not just because yeah. of his voice either. Yeah, no, we would uh, not put it, Scott on he's with Griffin. Gonna, he's going to be working on getting Blaine Gabbert for one of our shows. <laughs> yeah, that's future. a fact. Yes. <laughs> in yes. the future. Uh, but until then, Ryan Griffin will join us tomorrow. We're excited to hear from yep. him on the show. He's going to have some insights. He'll talk a little bit. Maybe he'll talk about Drunk Brady. I know he hasn't been asked about that. We'll ask him about that. We'll ask him <laughs> about a few other things too, including Kyle Trask. What's his thoughts on working with the youngster? Again, a quarterback and what's it like being a veteran on a team like this? And so we'll have plenty for him. And then uh, Thursday show, we're going to talk about our most disappointing bucks of all time. Mark and I are going to talk about. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a uh, time for Everybody just come and get ready for a rip session because we're not going to hold back. Yeah. We're going to hammer some dudes who just weren't yeah. very good as the Bucks. They had high expectations. And they didn't deliver at all. So Can I just give that's you all a hint? we do. Can I give you a hint of, of who my number one is going to be? Oh, yes. Give, give us a hint. This is all I'm going to do. Scott will understand this. That's the chop. I, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what it is. <laughs> he played but, at Florida State. How about that? Oh, that's what I was. I said, I was like, James, James but, Winston. No, oh, okay. Good God, they draft. They moved up in the draft to select that. I put uh, my, Scott remembers oh, when it happened. Nice. I put Chevin my head Smith. down on the that's desk. Right. You'll Chevin never, Smith. No, no, <laughs> not <laughs> Clifton Abraham, Stasi. not Chevin Smith. No, we're Bruno, I don't ever want to mention his name again, I, but RA is his initials. Is his initials. Right. We, yes. won't, we won't speak his name on the podcast uh, out of and, respect and for the speaking of Speaking of guests, we've got Tristan Wirfs conf confirmed or lined up uh, for next week as well. So yeah, that'll okay. be exciting next That's week. Good. We're going we're to try and have some more guests. And, and I'm working on Blaine Gabbert for Scott. Yes, I'm, I'm, I should Please. have that wrapped up. <laughs> that would be great this week. So I'm not going to be on that show talking about the most disappointing Buccaneers, but uh, I, I did make the graphic. <laughs> and, <good> <laughs> and uh, you know, if you don't remember who that guy is, that's Chris Swaggy Baker. And he's yeah. eating a hot dog on the sidelines during a preseason game with a can of dip in his hand. <laughs> mm. okay. Safe so to say like he will part, make the list. He's all business, right? This yeah. guy's all football all the time. What an absolute turd that guy was! <laughs> a turd just in the locker was, room, just on the a field, turd of a football player. Just, a, you know, just a turd of a football. player. Went to the Bengals after that, I think. Good fit yeah. for him. Hey, listen, yeah, he came and made his money. You know, that's uh, right. More power to him. But you got to do. Boy, he was terrible. Hey, we'll be making our money the rest of this week on the podcast, 4 p.m. Eastern. The next two days, make sure you're joining us uh, for a couple of fun shows uh, here on the Peter Report Podcast. We appreciate you all jumping on, especially jumping on in the summertime, supporting us all, keeping listening, keep spreading the word. Subscribe over to Peter Report TV to the Peter Report Podcast. Let your family and your friends know. Send out those texts. Let people know, hey, check these guys out. They're they're a pretty they're pretty at they're above average. They're great. You know, whatever you think. Let people know where they can uh, watch all the best bust the best bucks coverage over at pewterreport.com. Until next time, thanks so much for listening to another edition of the Pewter Report Podcast. Out. Out.